Welcome to how to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant. This is part 11. Silver soldering the superheater coil and making mistakes when using the lathe. I don't often show mistakes, but I do make plenty of them. Anyway, the mistakes will be later on in the video because at the moment I'm busy bending this piece of copper tube. I bent the copper tubing initially around the chimney pipe. It was exactly the right diameter. After cutting both ends of the copper tube into length, all I have to do now is silver solder the copper tube to the fittings that I made earlier. And after cleaning up the ends of the tube, I'm applying plenty of flux where the tube meets the brass fittings. And this is Easy Flow number 2 flux, and I'm using Silver Flow 55 silver solder. And all I need now is some heat, and here it comes. When silver soldering a part like this, you have to be very careful. If you apply too much heat, what's going to happen is something's going to melt and if it isn't the brass fitting on the end of the tube it could be the tubing itself. Although I'm aiming the gas torch at the fitting I can't be that specific and the tube is getting pretty hot as well. But I just have to time it right so I don't overheat the copper tubing in the middle but get the fitting hot enough for the silver solder to flow into the joint. I do have a smaller nozzle for the blowtorch but this does not give enough heat because of the close proximity of the copper coil, this nozzle is giving a little bit too much heat. But it's not a problem at all really. The copper's been heated to red, and now it's cooling, and as it cools it will become softer, because I am going to have to bend this considerably to get it into place in the fitting. So once the silver soldered part had cooled to black, I quenched it in some water. I always have a pot of water next to where I'm silver soldering. Apart from making the part cooler so I can handle it, the thermal shock of suddenly going from very hot to very cold loosens some of the scale. Normally, I would put this part in my acid pickle bath, but as this is going to be in a very hostile place on the boiler anyway, in the path of the fire, it's really not worth doing. It's going to look a lot worse than this once the coal-fired boiler's been run a few times. It was much easier fitting this part into the housing than I thought it was going to be. This process of heating the metal and then letting it cool doesn't work with all metals, but with copper and brass it does, and it is called annealing. I'll put the spelling on screen. So this is a superheater coil, or really it's a steam dryer. A proper superheater would go through a superheater flue into the fire. The idea being that wet steam from the boiler goes into one end of the pipe, and the pipe is coiled round at the top of the fire tube so it gets very hot, and hot steam comes out of the other end. Beginners will find this section quite useful. How not to do a job. This is mistake number one. I'm making the exhaust fitting, and this fitting allows the exhaust of the engine to be routed up the chimney. And the idea of this is, as the steam goes up the chimney, the steam pulls some more air through the fire. It's very much standard practice. If you listen to a steam locomotive, when it's going chuff, 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 that is the exhaust note from the cylinders. This fitting is made by using some hexagon bar. First of all I turn the end of it to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter and then I thread the end of it 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. That's 32 TPI. Why 32 threads per inch? Because this is a very common size and it's called an ME thread, model engineering thread. In this clip, I'm using a ruler to measure the internal diameter of the chimney housing. And the diameter is 1 and 5 eighths of an inch. So the position of the hole in the centre of this fitting, where the steam will be directed up the chimney, needs to be half of 1 and 5 eighths of an inch. So all I have to do is position the parting tool in precisely the right place to take a cut and part the piece off. Nothing could go wrong here, could it? No, of course not. This is a very plain sailing operation. I'm just parting off the piece of brass. The piece of brass is held very firmly in the chuck, and the tool is sharp, and brass is very easy to cut. So I wonder what the first mistake's going to be. I seem to have quite a good looking fitting. I stop the lathe, and just break off the end of it. And mistake number one is simply the sequence is wrong. I should have drilled this hole down the centre of the fitting while it was held in the chuck in its original position, that way it would have stayed true. But by cutting off the part and then refitting the part into the chuck, 
As you can see, it's a little bit wobbly and a little bit off centre. This is not really a disaster because this part is not a high tolerance component and if the centre hole was a little bit out, it really isn't important. Not good from a model engineering point of view or a general workmanship point of view, but it would still do the job. As I've shown before, I'm using a piece of silicone rubber on the twist drill to make sure I do not drill the hole all the way through. And it's now over to the drilling machine to drill the cross hole. First of all with the centre drill, so that I accurately position the cross hole, and then I follow this through with a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill. And this is mistake number two. I wonder what's wrong with this. Well, I will tell you, the problem with this is I drilled the hole too far into the work. So mistake number two compounds the problem. But now for the main mistake, and this is quite a good one. Mistake number three. As I mentioned in the last video, this lathe tool is damaged. You can see that there's not much of a tip on it and I'm holding the part very lightly by the thread. And as I take the cut, the part jumps out of the chuck, damaging the thread. And this is mistake number four, carrying on. Although I must admit I'm only carrying on for the purposes of the video. I would have scrapped this part quite a while back. Because what I didn't mention is when I drilled the cross hole, I drilled it too deep. So then when I machined the diameter down, Instead of having one nice hole that would direct the steam up the chimney, there was a hole at each side. This is no good at all. And now we have mistake number five. And mistake number five is to continuously become deluded and tell yourself that this part will be okay once you've mended the problem and plugged up one of the holes, maybe put a crossbar in and drilled that and then drilled down the end and made a fancy looking thing. But no, because don't forget, at the end that you can't see, the threads are really badly damaged. And you could say to yourself, oh well nobody's going to see this, it's inside the boiler, it's only a thing that directs a jet of steam up the chimney. But that is really not the point, you have to decide before you do a job how good your workmanship needs to be. And if you are happy with something that looks like this, then that's fine. My solution is to just start again. Get a new piece of brass because after all it doesn't really cost much but even if it was an expensive casting and you made a thorough mess of it accept it get another casting and move on and of course the one good thing is you've learned how not to do the job so here we go again i've reduced the end to 3 8 of an inch diameter threaded it 3 8 by 32 tried a nut on to make sure the threads are okay now i'm using a center drill and it's not wobbling about this is accurate and the centre drilling in the end of the piece of work is now the correct depth because this centre needs to be deep enough to form a proper cone to match the coned union that you'll be using when you connect up the exhaust pipe. Once again this clip is showing me drilling the hole in the work and also once again the piece of silicone rubber is in place to stop me drilling the hole too deep because when I use the parting tool to part off the fitting I do not want to find that I have a hole in the middle at the parting tool end and luckily I don't. Over now to the drilling machine to very carefully drill the cross hole again starting off of course with a centre drill and no you don't need to centre pop the work if you're using a centre drill just make sure it's in the middle after which just like before I use a twist drill to drill the hole to the correct diameter but unlike before I do not drill the hole too far through the piece so now when I reduce the external diameter of the fitting, the part that goes into the chimney, I'm not going to have a problem by having a hole either side. Even when I take a little bit more off the work to make it the final size, there is still just one hole which will exhaust the steam up the chimney. I'll quickly remove the sharp edge and now can assemble the part. This is the part that was damaged. Look at the state of the thread and look at the two holes. I did actually do this on purpose, I mean I'm not entirely stupid. This is the finished part ready to fit into the chimney housing. So this is the blast pipe where the exhaust is guided up the chimney. I may actually put a piece of tubing in to take the blast pipe further up the chimney because the problem is, as this is going to be a dual fuel boiler, with the blast pipe being right at the bottom of the chimney, it may have an adverse effect on a gas burner. 
So this is how it's going to sit on top of the boiler, and it fits perfectly. The hole for the blower is going to have a fitting in it that will need to connect up to the tap, which is a little bit high for it. In the next episode I'm going to be drilling all the holes around the chimney mount to mount it to the top cap. And to do this I will be demonstrating how to use a rotary table. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.